Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I am so excited to share my friend Jess Starr with you today. Jess is the leader of the Star Real Estate team at Keller Williams Realty, a team of about 10 realtors who are successfully helping over 200 people find new homes every year with a volume of 65 million. She has other businesses. She's a mom, a wife. And when we were talking about some things to prepare for this episode, Jess, we were joking around about titles. And what did you say to me? It could be walking the tightrope of life or... <laughs> It could be, I think it could be, welcome to Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs and special guest Jess Starr, where we talk about walking the tightrope of life while juggling on a unicycle and being chased by a bear as the rope's on fire. <laughs> that was exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes life just feels that way, right? You feel like you kicked in the pants and then all of a sudden the sun comes out and you're like, the day is great. I don't understand what I was thinking before. Why was I freaking out? Up. Everything's right. fine. Yeah. I love you. So welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for being my guest this week. I'm very happy to get into this conversation. And I know we've laughed about this before. We both have the same son in our office. She believes she could, so she did. <laughs> yeah, that literally, that's hanging on my wall. I, I think those are so important to remember who you are. And just know that no matter what, who is around you, matters, but in the end, it's what's inside that counts. And what are you telling yourself that matters mm -hmm. the most? And a lot of times, like we hear at Keller Williams and with bold and everything, our drunk monkeys talk to us a lot. And I think as moms and as women in general, we do that and we dim our light. And I know I've been very guilty of it a lot of times. Me too. And honestly, I think it's really important. That's why I have signs everywhere for that reason. Do you have them to just give you that little reminder throughout the day? I think it's important. Yeah. And I also do it because especially like I'm working from home this morning, I have somebody home sick. So <laughs> yeah. I do it because I have a daughter and I think it's important that she sees the affirmations and the words that we say to ourselves, because sometimes they might catch us or see us in a weak moment or a down moment. And they might not always hear that. I love when I know that she sneaks in because I'm doing a podcast or I'm teaching a class or she hears me talking to a client. And after school one day, she came over to me and she goes, mom, I have to tell you something. And I said, what's that kiddo? She goes, I was talking to my teacher today and we learned all about mindsets. And I said, yeah. And she goes, and I don't know if you know this, but you're a gross mindset person. And that's, that's amazing. And she, right? how old? she how was, old? Uh, I think nine when she told me that's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's you know, I have grandchildren now, which is quite crazy to believe and exciting all at the same time. And I was talking to my four-year-old granddaughter who started preschool. And I said, you're going to have a great day. She goes, yes, Gigi, because I think about having a great day. And I was like, yay. It's yes. Perfect. My kids stand around. They're like, who are you? <laughs> we were going to school. It was, get your shoes on. Go get your backpack. Go school. Go get your backpack. Go yeah. Your backpack. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but now you're like, oh, let me show all the love that I didn't have the time to show. So I try now, at, and it's not all the time, obviously, but there's a lot of yelling to find your shoe, one's upstairs, one's down. But I try in those moments to channel my future grandmother or Nana in me. Yeah, when you're a grandma, you have a different skill set. You've learned more things. You have more time, more patience, hopefully. So it is different. But if you talk to your kids now, like you were their future grandparent or the grandparent mm. you always love the most. That's what I try to do. I try to make the memories with them that way. So the other times that I'm yelling and throwing everybody yeah. into the baseball. Bam. I love that. Jess, you talked about something a second ago. We are fortunate that our company's culture is a lot about personal development and growth. And we believe, or it's very common to hear your business grows to the extent that you do. And hey, congratulations. I believe you've been in real estate 20 years. <laughs> I have. I started when I was 23. Wow. So like mindset is so important. We know that it's probably 90% of our success. Yep. And it's still, I was thinking about this just the other day with all the coaching training opportunity that we have to learn from some incredible people in and out of our industry and even though we know all those things are true about mindset, it, we're still human. And there are those days or moments where 
we struggle. And as we were joking about the tightrope being on fire, <laughs> you're juggling a lot as a business owner, you're leading other people responsible for their outcomes too, although they have to do their part yep. and leading your children, your husband works with you in the business. How do you manage to get your mindset back on track when you find that you're feeling either overwhelmed or maybe stressed or just having some negative thoughts? Honestly, I, and my team knows this too. I'll tell them sometimes, okay, I just need to go and think. I just need to go and meditate somewhere. And sometimes it sounds silly, but like there'll be pictures of me just like floating in the pool looking like I'm staring off into nothing. And I am thinking and planning and doing all the things, but I'm uninterrupted. I can float by myself and I don't have the kids. I don't have the team. I don't have all the calls because my phone's not on me. And all of a sudden I have time to think. So I take time to do that or be near water if I can. I take time to meditate, maybe have coffee with a friend that I haven't seen. Somebody like, think about those people. You should have people in your life that you know you can call that'll lift you up. Mm -hmm, and that's definitely. what I try to do. Yeah. And I think that think I've learned that too over the years because I can be wired to be a go person. And I've learned how important it is to take the time out, to take the thinking time, the planning time. Because I can be quite fast paced and spontaneous. And I believe I'm just going to jump and the net will show up. Yep. Yes. There is. <laughs> Ready and, fire and aim. It works. It's important to have that time for dialing it back or yep. actually in that moment thinking about what could I do differently? Maybe that would change something around me. Yep. It's yeah. huge. And I think also having a significant other that supports you. When mm -hmm. they know that you need that time. I, we had bought a couple of investment properties in Florida and in the winter, it gets slow in Connecticut for real estate and it gets also gloomy and doomy. And I totally suffer from seasonal affective. And he will look at me and be like, babe, looks like flights were on sale. I think you should go to Florida. And oh, it's so really nice. nice to know that you have people that can call you out on, you got to get going. You got to get some sunshine. You got to do whatever the thing that's going to rejuvenate you. Sometimes it's going to Disney with a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, I know you love Disney. So oh, that's for another episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I too am very fortunate. I have a husband who's very supportive and dialed in like that as well. And for anyone who's listening, and maybe it's not your partner in life, it could be that friend, it could be a colleague. There's someone in your life that is probably pretty dialed into you. And you just have to have that connection where almost where you can give them permission to say, listen, if you see I need something, I need yeah. you to tell me. And I'm going to do the same for you. Yep. Because especially as women, I think that there's definitely a difference between men and women. We can't ignore that, but there's definitely a difference in the way we lead and the way that we process information. And in that vein, in terms of leadership, what do you think you struggle with most as a leader? I struggle with having a tribe and not feeling alone at times. Because really? as much as we have a bunch of friends, I don't resonate with people that are inauthentic or mm -hmm. that can come off as fake or ego driven. It's just not my thing. It's never been my thing. I don't care what your production is. It doesn't matter. Are you a good person? Do you do the right thing? And do you treat others kindly? So that matters first to me, then we can be friends. And if you do great production, awesome. And we can mastermind and spitball and do those things. That's amazing to me. But if it's all about ego and how many units you did or the volume you did, or I don't care, you could still be broke. You could still be unhappy. You could be in a bad marriage. You could have a substance abuse, all those things that I tend to pull myself away once I start feeling that kind of thing. And maybe it's a fault of my own because it sounds judgy. And I know that. And yet I know I need to be with people that inspire me. I have a couple of girlfriends that are at Keller Williams that text every morning and they text all they text. It's not never about production. It might be like, Hey, I'm investing in this new, whatever it's kind of cool. I want to share my good news with people that will support me, but they text their step count. They text how they chose not to eat a cupcake. They text. And it just is inspiring because it's like, Hey, you can do it too. Hey, I really wanted to do this, but I didn't. And I'm so proud of myself. And both of them gave up drinking alcohol, not because they had like major issues, but they just thought it was a healthier option. Having people like that is a different level of inspiration and it's a personal level. So it's not about chasing the dollar. It's about creating the moments and it's about taking care of your personal well-being. Oh, hundred percent. And I don't know if it's so judgy or is it really just about getting clear mm -hmm. about what is in your value system, what works for you, what you need to feel supported. Thanks for that. That means a lot to me. 
Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad because I don't think it's about that. I think it's really about knowing what is right for you and being like unapologetic about it. Yeah. And were you always that person or is that something you've worked on and developed over the years? Kind of always been this way. Uh And I'll find like, I'll connect with a group and it'll be amazing. I'll have so much fun. And then something starts like, it's not always, but it's on occasion. And I'm like, okay, I knew I fit. I knew we had fun. And all of a sudden something wasn't clicking for me, not necessarily any particular reason, but I noticed I just didn't feel in alignment. And I trust my gut more than anything else. I'm a big time empath. And I really resonate with people that have good positive energy that one of the, the group texts I was talking about with the two other girls, one of them is Chloe, who you've met and know. Yes, too. I love Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Yes, she's the best, right? And I don't even have to see those girls. I do not have to see them. Like if I saw them once or twice a year, that would, you know, but it's just nice to know that we have each other's back. Yeah. So totally. I, I have been that way and I have chosen. And I also try to give my kids permission to do the same. If you're not in alignment with somebody, you don't have to hang on forever. It's great to have longtime friends but I do have longtime friends. I don't have a thousand of them, but I have some really good ones for life. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, it's all about relationships. And and of course we have different levels of relationships in our life. I was just listening to, am I, I can't remember the podcast, but I was listening to a podcast because I listened to a lot of them and they were talking about how to move from being an acquaintance to a friend. Yeah. And I thought that was such a great conversation and how it's okay though. Also, that you may have some acquaintances and then you have some friends who are just in that close circle yep. and can feel that you feel like you're there to support each other. Because being in business, a lot of people listening to this podcast own their own business. There are, a lot of them are in real estate. I've always said it is the most exciting and scariest ride you'll ever be on in yep. your life. And what you started in real estate, you started your real estate business 20 years ago, you were in your twenties. Yep. What prompted that? Because some people find real estate as a second career, but I, I'm assuming you, you started this as your first career. It actually was my second, but I wasn't in the first one long enough. So I graduated college and it was after September 11th, got a job and it was great. It was an internet startup company. And like very small brother and sister work at the top. And there was about 40 employees. Well, after September 11th, I graduated 2002, got that job. But the couple of years after stuff started to change in the market a bit and they ended up dissolving the company. So a month before my wedding, I lost my job. Oh my gosh. And I luckily also was a house parent simultaneously. I was doing a sales and marketing job which I had a degree in and I got let go, but I happened to also be a house parent at an all girls school. So luckily we had housing for free and we got paid to house parent once a month. And my husband, two weeks later, lost his job. He was an apprentice doing heating and air. And it was a ratio because business got slow. They laid off a couple of journeymen and he was the last apprentice in. Wow. So we both lost our jobs. And I looked at him and I said, the month you were getting married. Yeah. It was a month and two weeks before we were getting married. And the day before I had paid for our honeymoon which was crazy. Holy but cow. thank God I did because we wouldn't have gone. So everything lines up the way it's supposed to. So I looked at my husband now and I said, listen, you've been going to school part-time and working full-time as an apprentice. Why don't you go back full-time and I'll figure out how to pay for it, even though we both lost our jobs. Wow. And then I said, you know what? I'm also going to get into real estate because I don't want anybody telling me how much I can make. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it as the sky's the limit. On the other hand, the first year I sold two condos that were $140,000 each. And that was it. So (laughs) I did side work. I landscaped the house that we live in now. I waitressed. I did DJ. She believed she could, so she did. That's right. So funny, but everything lines up the way it's supposed to be. And sometimes you've been put on the path that then gets diverted and you don't realize why. And you, you, are struggling with it and you're fighting it when you should really just go with that flow and go, okay, it wasn't meant for me to be over here. And I'm supposed to go in this direction. I don't know why, but I'm just going to trust. And I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Life is never a straight road, right? And we never know what curveballs coming at us. And so once you got things on track with your careers, you started your family and life's been perfect ever since, right? (laughs) Yeah, totally perfect. We, I mean, (laughs) If We've that's had, what you thought you were listening to today, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> perfectly imperfect, I should say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because everything happens the way it's supposed to. 
It does. And we had four kids in the process. Real estate has been a phenomenal career. I have kept doubling my business year over year for a very long time. And like we have crazy market share, which is great, but it's not even about the market share in town and in the surrounding towns. It's really about the relationships we built. We have that market share because right. of how we give within our community, how we show up to help our neighbors, how we support our local businesses. And you don't get a 28% market share in town without doing that. And I know you and I think the same way in terms of like when I was introducing you, it's not that you had 200 sales, you helped 200 people or 200 families yep. find their next home or their next opportunity. And we never forget that it is always about the people and being a leader is about the people. What would you say if someone asked you, Jess, just, just help me understand your leadership style or define your leadership style. How would you define it? And how would other people define it? Because I think there's always a difference. Ooh, this is tough. So my team knows, they they think of my husband and I like I'm the mama and papa bear. Like we will take care of you no matter what. Mm -hmm. We are going to encourage you. We're going to push you out of the nest when you need it, but we're going to encourage you. We will be your biggest supporters and we're going to help you make your dreams come true. That's the type of leader that we want to be. And by that, we are firm, but kind. We are loving. We are very driven. We're motivated and we're inspiring. So I think our team members probably would say much of the same. I'm sure some of my admin might go, she's concentrated chaos and a little bit of sunshine and hurricane mixed together and it just works. So when you have the right people that are lined up with you and know that your values align with theirs and that your values are their best interest, I think you have people that are dedicated and are loyal for a long time. Yes, definitely. What's been the most gratifying part of developing an organization, leading people, helping other people hit their goals? For me, I think last year, so our numbers were down a hair last year. We were down about 15%. I mean, and the market was down even more, but we weren't down due to the market. And I will, I know this for a fact. So we had five team members, five selling agents that were out having babies. That were wow. down about 15% of the year. So I felt like I won because they were clearly happy. Remind me not to drink any water at your house. <laughs> I know, right? And so that was a major win for me, knowing that my people, like they can get tired because of the market, but they're not burnt out. So they're managing their time. They're building their legacies. They are taking the vacation. We have coverage on the team to help each other. And they're also learning how to build legacies through wealth building, which is really something I'm passionate about too. So yes. I coach them to all of that. Let's talk about that for a sec, because there may be someone listening who's like wealth building, and that may not be something that's really on their radar. So what does that mean for you? And how do you help others understand how they can create a path to building wealth? So for me, what that means is number one, we're going to work on their budget. We're going to find yeah. things, wealth building initially, you can't build anything if you don't have anything and you're in the negative. So we're going to take a bird's eye view of their entire life, of their spending, of the things that they're doing, their streaming. So just going to hit pause for a second, because some people get really freaked out when you start talking about numbers, money, finances, yeah. a budget. Yep. I know I've been coaching real estate agents all in all about 15 years now. And sometimes I can literally see beads of sweat start to yeah. form on their, <laughs> on their brow. So do you find that to be true? How do you help them through that? <laughs> so the first thing I do is I ask for permission. Mm, and I say, so do I have your permission to walk you through this? And I said, just so you know, I'm an open book leader. So when I fail, they know. When I'm emotional, they know. I don't try to hide it. I don't try to be better than anybody. And I let them know I messed up or something happened. And I want them to learn that I am probably the biggest failure on the team. And here's why that's a blessing to you. You all get to learn from my mistakes. Oh, you all so get to good. learn how I learned. So, so talking to them about their personal finances is number one, seeing if they have savings accounts, seeing how their spending habits are. And it's not just a one conversation kind of thing. Like we build on this over time and yeah. it's kind of like making stone soup. You can't just do it with the stones. You got to add all the other pieces in, but you got to do it slowly for people to trust mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And I think it's important if we're going to talk about building wealth, you can't really create a path to building wealth if you're in debt. And if you don't understand what your personal budget is or, or what those numbers mean to your life. And if you're in your own business, that comes, goes back to what are the numbers in your business, what numbers you have to hit. And, and that, those are some of the things we talk about. I know Gary, Gary Keller has written about that in the MREA book. 
So I love that you help them figure that out. Yeah. When, and here's the thing. Once your team members know that I don't just sit down and talk to them about, hey, how many homes do you want to sell? That's an easy conversation. We start with their goal in mind. How much income do you want to make? Okay, then let's work that number back and see how many deals we need to do, how many activities we need to do a month. By the way, unless you tie a goal to that, so what does that mean for you? Are you want to sell 50 homes? Great. And you want to make $100,000 or whatever your number is, right? What does it mean to you? That means that I can pay off my car. I can have money for my kid's school. I can get out of this credit card debt. I could take a vacation with my husband. Tying that why to that goal makes that goal that much more attainable in a sense. And when they're not doing their stuff, I can simply just say, why did you say no to your dreams this week? Oof, that's a good one. Why was that okay? What's not my goal, it's yours. I'm still going to do the business I need to do, whether you do it or not. So I'm going to hit my goals. Why did you decide yours don't matter? That's powerful. So obviously the accountability uh, relationship, the, the questions around holding someone accountable is super important in your business and as a leader. Yes. Yep. Who holds, who holds you accountable? My MAPS coach, Sajik Patel. Ah, I love him. I love Sajik. He is amazing. And I have to tell you the net worth conversation. I didn't realize that we had a net worth. I didn't know what net worth was when I started back in May of 2020. And it's just writing down all your liabilities, all your assets, all your debts, and then figuring out what that final number is and mm -hmm. where you're starting from. By the way, a lot of people start with their net worth and the negatives. I know there was a MAPS coach that started at a negative 873,000. Wow. For net worth. So listen, there's only one way and that's up. And you know what? You can't fix something you don't pay attention to. If you're not aware of it, you can't fix it. Whatever the number is, we just have to start there. And it's it. where you start. <laughs> it's where right. you end up. And the thing is, it's I realized what a fun journey it is. You can make it fun. And I totally geek out and I fill out my net worth tracker at least twice a month, if not four times. Twice a month. Yeah. Because we are changing things that quickly and we're making so many adjustments to what we do. Our goal now is to get to a zero tax bracket. So we're not paying any taxes. Wow. So I, I may have to talk to you about that offline. <laughs> listen, this was a big deal. And I only learned it from Sajik when I had started. And I will totally give him the credit. He is phenomenal. When I had started, we looked at things like, okay, investing, right? So we wanted to buy additional houses. And I had always been on the philosophy, long-term houses, I want to make $1,000 a month. That was my rule if I didn't buy it. Now, how foolish was that if you think about it? Because I wasn't thinking, oh, wait, rent goes up every month. Sure. So I should have bought that house way back when that only made me $700 a month because at this point it would be $1,500. Uh -huh. yeah. And then also reevaluating the properties that we own, for example, maybe they're not performing the way that we actually need them to. So I had re-looked at our entire portfolio and last year decided to reposition things, not even just acquiring new things. I repositioned the assets we had, meaning I went from some that were long-term to make them midterm rentals. Some I went to short-term rental and you know, like our beach house, we didn't even rent at all. We put it on the market to rent as short-term and in 52 nights, it pays our mortgage for the year. Excellent. So like just repositioning what you currently have and then always just making small adjustments of, along the way. It's consistency and it's the tiny adjustments along the way. It's not one big thing that changes everything, but in well, it's four years now. So since 2020 till now, we more than tripled our net worth. Wow. That's so impressive. Congrats. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. And if someone's listening to this and saying, okay, this sounds interesting. I'm not really sure how I would even start that. I know you're an avid reader. Are there any books? That I know I'm putting you on the spot, but there, are there any resources that you've used over the years or that you could recommend to someone? I always like to give resources so people can. I'll give you a whole list. I'm listening right now in the car and they're going to have to figure this out later. But So one of my favorite books on mindset is Think Like a Monk and The Happiness Advantage. Oh, I love The Happiness Advantage. And also The Surrender Experiment. That is a great one as well. I don't know that one. Uh huh. So that one is all about letting go and being in a sense mm -hmm. and following what's lining up for you. And then financial wise, one of my most favorite books is what would the Rockefellers do? Mm -hmm. I think they might've retitled it to what would billionaires do? 
Okay. But it talks about whole life insurance and how the Rockefellers used their whole life insurance policies as their personal banks. So we started doing the same. Interesting. I even bought a property with it. Yeah. Um, and there's a bunch of other books. Obviously, if you want to invest, I love The Millionaire Real Estate Investor or Hold, two of my favorites that are Keller Williams books, but I follow those religiously as well. And then I have a ton of un- Money Master the Game and ton of other ones. Yeah. And the reason why I asked that question and to share some, throw some names of books out there is just because I think it's always important for us to understand we have to be willing to take the guidance, the help, the coaching, the mentoring from other people who have walked the path before us. And that just, that's why I love being a coach. Probably why I like even doing this podcast, just because life is hard enough, but if we can figure out how to walk in the footsteps of some other people, I think, I always think about the analogy when you were kids and you ran outside after a big snowstorm, the first kid had the hardest job, right? But after that, we jumped through those footsteps. So that's why it's important. And I was thinking about it too. And when I started, and it's actually a book, if you guys are real estate agents or even entrepreneurs that have clients. It's a book I give to a lot of my newer investors or newer buyers and sellers. And it started by, it's two books by him, David Bach, The Latte Factor, just based on simple habits. And I read that first and was like, oh my gosh, you can be a millionaire by figuring out how to not get a latte or not do certain things every day. So I'm always stressing that to my kids because it's those little, it's not the big purchases that make you in debt. It's the consistent little purchases at the gas station, at the coffee shop, at the sandwich yeah, right. shop. The expensive lattes, right? Yeah. And that's what really gets you. And it's not the big ones. And so <clears throat> I have everybody read that. And then I usually give them at closing a book called Smart Couples Finish Rich by David Bach. Yeah. And so that's I feel like because yeah. smart, I have David's book, Smart Women Finish Rich. Yes. It's, you, oh, you know what? It's <laughs> So I'm in my home office today, this morning before I head over to the market center and it's usually right here, but I see it's on my <laughs> side table, which is where I sit. That's my thinking chair. Yeah. John Maxwell uh, has often taught me. And so it's sitting right there. So yeah, excellent book with, which I look at it like a textbook. Like I can yes, read it exactly like a workbook. Yeah. And I love at, it. At the end, I, the reason the book, even if you read nothing else of the book, which just went to the end, I think for everybody starting in life, when you buy your first home and you start investing in anything or you get married, you should have this book because there is a um, checklist at the end on how to create a file system at home Mm -hmm. so that God forbid anything ever happened to you, your family could know where everything was. So like I said, that's the very first thing I did. I set all of that up and with all our properties and everything else in our businesses, I want to make sure I have that lined up. So God forbid my husband and I have a plane crash, then my kids are going to know where everything is and what to do. Yep. I have started many of the things that David talks about in that book. So you're welcome, everyone. We've given you lots of little nuggets today, gifts on some things that can change your life. And I think that financial literacy is so important and understanding that you can change your outcome in anything at any moment. You're just a few decisions away from that. So having more information will help you make better choices. Anna, do you feel like you see a business owner that is phenomenal at their craft. They are the best at what they're going to do, right? They could be curating events, could be a contractor that can do kitchens, whatever else, but they're not a good business owner. Yes. They're not good at managing their money or managing their time or spending that time with their loved ones. And then they get in a position where maybe they're getting divorced or maybe they have a substance issue, like all those things because they, they know their craft, but they never took the time to learn to be a business owner too. Yeah. I think I I see it all the time. That was one of the reasons why I left a business I was in back in 2010 to start my own practice as a coach. And and I started as a business coach working with entrepreneurs because I understood the world they lived in. And I saw it all the time. And like you just said, you're good at what you do. You're good at your craft. You have a passion for it. And I see this in real estate all the time. Oftentimes, real estate agents don't realize I have to be a marketing person. I have to know social media and and all the things that are trending right now in marketing. Then I have to become an accountant. I have to be my own admin. 
right? All these things. And then you're making money and it's figuring out what to do with that money and how to be smart about it. So it, it is very true and it can be overwhelming, which is why just to talk about coaching for a minute, you said you work with a coach. I am a coach, but I have several coaches. Yes. And it's a game changer because you can't possibly expect that whatever education you had in your the early part of your life is going to sustain you forever. And you also have to have someone who is able to show you the forest through the trees because we have blind spots and we can struggle unnecessarily sometimes. Yeah. I think a lot of people forget that they have the ability to have not only a business coach, but sometimes people in their life, like their personal trainer at the mm -hmm. gym class that you take, like those people are coaches for your life too. For the sure. Therapist you should be seeing. Like I love those people because they're also such a huge help in different aspects of your life that all tie together in the end. Yes. If we're not willing to recognize the fact that they're really there to coach us, to guide us, to help us self-discover. Yep. And a lot well, of people don't take that up. Because there are a lot of parts of, of that make us who we are, right? There's our business self. There's a part of our life that deals with people and relationships. There's health. There's the finances, right? Spirituality. I've shared here many times, I'll put it in the show notes again for you guys, another resource today, the Wheel of Life exercise again. Yeah. Uh, Gary Keller talks about it in his book with Jay Papazan, The One Thing. They talk about the seven circles, right? So it's understanding that you have these different components of your life and it's important to assess how you feel in each of those areas, what goals you've set in each of those areas, and identify who can help you in each of those areas. Because the person who is the right coach for you in your business may not be your spiritual coach, right? And is also not going to be the person to help you with your health goals, right? They're not going to be with you in the gym. So yeah, you're right. You have to know that you can create a team of people that can be consultants, coaches, accountability yes. partners. Do you think that's been a catalyst for your growth? In 20 years, you've achieved some incredible things. And now helping other people do the same. I know that you're someone who has faith. I know you're someone who has a lot of belief in herself. And you definitely tap into the resources around you. If you could say there was one thing, what would it be that has really helped you to be successful? Allowing myself grace when I mess up. Or if I think I've messed up, giving myself a little more grace. Leaning into failure faster and being okay with it and knowing there's a lesson coming on the other side. And then I will honestly say my same friend, Chloe, when my dad passed away, I was so sad. And we had a lot of stuff that happened in our life. My husband's traumatic accident to my dad, his mom, tons of stuff, but they were all lessons. And I think I was meant to go through them so I could be a beacon for other people to teach them in times like COVID and things like that. But at that time, Chloe was one of those people for me and I don't even know if she knows this, but she said to me, Jess, I think you're really sad. I had gained so much weight. I was eating nothing, but I gained, my body just was reacting. Yeah. And she said, I think you're really sad. I think it'd be good if you went to, to go talk to somebody, talk to a therapist. And I remember growing up and one of my drunk monkeys was my mom. And she would go, oh, we don't need therapy. We're not like your cousins over here or your so-and-so. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure we do, but okay. <laughs> and Chloe said that and then said, by the way, me and my husband go to the same guy together. And I think you'll love him. Wow. And because it was said with such love and out of care, uh, nothing else with zero intention behind it or anything to gain. I listened to her and I went and I have to tell you, it was so liberating, invigorating, trying and challenging. And some of those things we don't want to face. Sure. And yet I think because I went to therapy, that really started changing all the things very quickly for me. And that's also probably when I really realized certain relationships that were either triggering or not right and didn't make me feel like a whole person or authentic to be around. Wow. I, and I think that I took a lot of things out of what you just said. One, if you see someone struggling when you care about them, find a way to connect and share what you're seeing and offer a hand, because I think that's something that doesn't happen enough. Yep. And I get it. Sometimes we're afraid to step over a boundary or feel like we're intruding. Yet I know that you guys are close friends and, and she could see that you were challenged and struggling with some stuff. So that I thought was great. 
and that you were able to then take a step towards that because sometimes we can put it off and and put ourselves last and and say I don't need help and I've been there too That's especially when we had my story <laughs> We don't know well, how to put ourselves first as moms. That's what I'm learning. Yes. Because if we don't, we can't take care of anybody else. And we have to admit when we're struggling, because I know we're the ones everyone comes to for help. We're the uh, person figuring it out, creating the solutions, removing the roadblocks, guiding, teaching, leading, but that doesn't mean that we don't need it too. And because if you keep giving something away, your cup is empty. Yep. And so you need to find a way to fill it up. Yeah. So my husband, I, mainly me, and he just goes along with me, but that's fine. I, in the beginning of the year, we always come up with a theme for the year of what it's going to be. And this year we said, if it's not an immediate hell yes, then it's a hell no. If it's a maybe, that's a hell mm. no. So whether that is hanging out with somebody, whether that is committing to an event or an organization or anything, work we don't want to do. If it's not an immediate hell yes, that's a no. How do you know it's a hell yes, or it's just spontaneous enough that you're, that's your sign? If you ask me to do something and I just say, yes, that's it. I immediately get a pit or something in my stomach if something doesn't feel like it's in alignment. So the moment I feel that's a no. Love that. And it it's, could be silly things in it. It could be like, hey, do you want to go to dinner with someone? If I even had a pause to say yes, that's a no. Yeah, that's great. We don't listen to ourselves. We don't, lot. or we do and we ignore it. That's right. Yeah. And I think that's something else I've learned over the years that I've always felt connected to my intuition and use it at a high level and still can think about times when I didn't listen and I can look back now and say, ah, see, yeah, <laughs> I, I can think of two times this year. I said yes to something. And it was almost as I walked in, got settled immediately regretted it. So like when I didn't go to one of the events this year, I had zero FOMO. I and usually I'd miss friends. I'd miss this. I'd miss that. None. So I was like, that was the right choice. So I can know that I'm connecting better with myself now because I don't have those feelings. If I know I'm going to have a feeling of missing out, I'll go. Right. But yeah, none. Yeah. This I think is one of the things that really can plague high achievers. Yes. Right. Where we have seen and built successful outcomes in business and in life because of what we can do to contribute and the things that we know we have in terms of talent and we're leaders and we want to be visible and we want to create opportunity, influence, right? I could go on and on. And yet we have to learn when enough is enough yep. and how to create some personal boundaries because otherwise burnout is around the corner. It Yeah, it's crazy. And when we feel that burnout, honor it. And before it gets to full burnout, because there was times last year, I can tell you, I was like, I could feel like I didn't want to get out of bed. And I'm mm -hmm. not that person at all, but it just was challenging. And I'm sure hormonal stuff, I'm hitting that age. I have a, a senior graduating and a daughter going into other things. Yeah, so uh -huh. it's all the things, all the emotions at once. And I, I, my body and my soul was just tired. Yeah. Yeah. I can't thank you enough. I feel like we could talk for another hour, but I want to be mindful of your schedule. And I just want to wrap things up by asking this question. Is there a question that I didn't ask you that you wish I did? Is there anything you'd like to share or end on that would be important for you and for everyone listening? I just think that we need to get back to the kindness and genuinely feeling people's souls. Mm -hmm. It's not about just having people. It's not just about having clients and customers. I think of my team and I think of our 200 families that we helped. It's like when they count the people that come on the plane, I have 200 souls on board. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. And that feels like such a deeper connection to people when you're really thinking about, gosh, I'm impacting their life. I am impacting their memories by what I do. I am impacting the things they're going to be able to accomplish in the rest of their life if they make the wrong decision or the right decision. And again, it's all on them, but I just take that so to heart and the soul has a heart. So to me, have heart in the work you do, have heart in the way you treat others. And it's okay to be a big, excuse my language, badass business owner and have a giant heart. Girl, that's worked well for me. Yes, absolutely. You are badass. 
That's why I love you. And I just have to say one more thing and a shout out to Gabby Bernstein because I do have her spirit junkie affirmation deck here on my uh, desk. I love that. Yes. I'm talking about affirmations when we started. So this is the card I pulled early this morning and I'm just going to read it. It says, owning my power inspires others to do the same. I am not afraid to shine. I and love that, that. Is who I, I believe you are. That's how I see you. And I think that what you just said encapsulates that so beautifully. So thank you for being who you are. You're amazing. Thank you for that. I need to go get those cards now. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Gabby, maybe if you're listening, you can be on the podcast next. But yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah. love it. Well, one thank every you morning. for having me, Anna. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you and for sharing all of your experiences and being so candid about it too, because I think that is another thing that you and I were chatting about a little bit before I hit record, that it's about authenticity and really at this point in our lives and in our careers, it's about being real and being around people who are real. So thank you for bringing the real talk this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody, she is a star. All right. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too.